This will be the Thursday open. Three, two, one. It's day three at the 50th SCCA Solo Nationals. I'm Brian Belansky. This is Inside the SCCA, presented by Mazda Motorsports. Day three is the first day of competition for our second group of racers. Th uh, th uh, 700 racers won national or competed for national championships uh, Tuesday and Wednesday. Uh, Thursday, it's another group. 600 more uh, drivers will be competing for national championships uh, over the next two days, and uh, we'll be here for all of that action. So let's get right to the interviews as we bring you information and, and, and stories from behind the scenes here at the Solo Nationals. With me right now, Dawson Moreau. You are here for your fourth Solo Nationals, right? Yes, fourth time. So let's start with all the kind of nuts and bolts. What are you driving? Uh, driving a 91 Miata in STS class. Okay, now is this the class you've been in before or is this rather new to you? How is that working out for you? Uh, yes, so originally uh, I started autocrossing in 2019 um, religiously and then I was in my friend's STS Miata. Right. And then after that, um, I had moved from North Dakota after I got out of the military. And then um, I just would fly back to nationals because it's so much fun. Right. And then one year um, I had to drive an SSC uh, SSC class because that's what I was going to bring my own car to nationals okay. uh, in 2020, but that didn't work out. Gotcha. So um, gotcha. it's been STS since. So you mentioned you were, uh, you're a veteran. Thank you for your service. Um, what is, why do you keep coming back to this event? Uh, it, yeah, so I haven't even been at local autocrosses in the past two years right this event is amazing because we, we have friends we've made friends all over the country so and they're all you know crazy people who spend a bunch of money to race around orange cones right um so this is the one time that we can all get together and just enjoy each other's company yeah. uh compete as because you know we everybody likes to a little bit of competition um i do plan on practicing more yeah. But, so I can be more competitive here at Nationals. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. So you might see us doing this a lot while we're here. There are flies in, in this airport like I've never seen before. It's yeah. crazy. Um, so ignore that part, folks. Uh, you and I met in a very, very interesting manner. Yes. <laughs> um, we both drove from the west, mm -hmm. me just slightly further west than you. Uh, you came out of Phoenix. Correct. Uh, drove here to Lincoln. Yep. And uh, we were in a, I was in a little small town uh, in Oklahoma, I, I think, think we were yeah. still in Oklahoma at the time. And uh, th this pickup truck pulls up next to me, and there's a guy giving me the international signal for roll down your window. So I, I rolled down my window. I'm like, did I cut him off? What's going on here? I hope I, you know. And uh, he goes, are you going to Lincoln? And I'm like, yeah. And he goes, I saw the sticker. We're going to Lincoln too for Solo Nationals. And uh, we pulled over. We talked for a few minutes. We, we didn't have hotels for the night. So we found a hotel in, in the same, in, in the town we wanted to get to in Dodge City, Kansas. Yep. The bustling non-metropolis <laughs> of Dodge City, Kansas. And uh, and we went to dinner and had a wonderful dinner with you and your girlfriend. Yes. Um, talked racing and all that other stuff. And it's it's just a an example of what kind of a family this club is, right? Yeah, and um, I was telling my girlfriend too, she's like, what are you doing? Like, you're just talking to somebody on the side of the road? I'm like, yeah, it's, it's with SCCA. Exactly. Anybody you meet that has an autocross sticker or SCCA, anything, they're gonna be you're cool. You're gonna be able to have a conversation with them. Yeah. Like, they're not gonna be mad that you wanna talk about cars. Uh, and I'm so glad that I have the inside the SCCA bumper sticker on the back <laughs> of the car because you wouldn't have any would, idea to know. Not a clue. I had to just been a random car driving up middle of Oklahoma. So, um, so this year without having the practice right. throughout the year, um, we, there's a test in tune here. So for those who've never been to Nationals, there is a third course uh, that's really small. It's about 30 seconds or so uh, long. And uh, people can uh, buy runs on this test and tune course uh, on the days that they're not. Well, they can do it on the days they're running too, I guess. Uh, no, so you won't be able to do it the days you're running. I think just because. Be, the it, I mean, I guess it depends because yeah. uh, your your run like because I had to work heat one and then right. I, I run heat three. It'd probably be hard to do. Yeah. 
Um, and I don't think it's open on, on Thursday and Friday either. Um, I think today's the last day. Yes. Uh, but regardless, day. there's a test tune, tune course. You could go and, and buy an hour's worth of time. And uh, I had a, a few guys uh, and gals today. Yesterday session, I had there were probably 40 cars. Mm. So I could have done even more today if I wanted to. Um, how many runs, test and tune sessions did you do? I did one session with four runs. Okay. Yep. So. That's your sum total of practice coming into That was all of my racing for this, for this national, yep. Um, are you ready? Uh, absolutely <laughs> not. Uh, I realize there is a seat, you, you, can't, um, you can't replace seat time. Right. Uh, it, it, you, uh, so the STS Miata, it, it's very capable. And not driving that capable of a car for you know two years or less since last nationals, right. you forget how much you can really push the car, and it will turn when you want it to turn. Right. So I think that was the that, that's still I'm getting used to the car still. Sure. Uh, even on day two. And that STS Miata is probably one of the better cars in that class, right? I would say so. Yeah. 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 He, um, yeah. My buddy spent a lot of time perfecting it, and I, a lot of the STS Miatas are all they're pretty similar because uh, right. everybody in. Like it's a competition, but you everybody exchanges their ideas. Sure. Like what you know, what brake pads are you running? What uh, what suspension? Everything. So because like if I want you to challenge me. Right. Right. That's the whole premise. So the owner of the car, it, he raced autocrosses a lot with it. Yes. Yep. He's been to a couple pro solos this year already, and um, he races locally still. So you'll have a good idea of how far behind you are by comparing you to him, right? Yeah. Absolutely. And it's, uh, it's a little, and there's one buddy I have that I beat every time. Yeah. This year, he's, uh, it's, it's going to be tough. So he's looking forward to whooping your butt this year. Absolutely, he nice. is. That's all he talks about. Nice. <laughs> um, but, so, there is an important role that you're playing for your other driver, and, and that is to help get heat in the tires. Yeah, I am the designated tire warmer. So you'll go out first. Um, and you guys will scope first, second, first, second, right? It's not four, you don't get three runs and he gets three runs. Right, right? yep, it's alternating. Right, so, um, and, and, and there are a lot of people here who are the designated tire warmer. Absolutely. Um, and so do you, as a designated tire warmer, um, it's bad form if you beat the guy you're warming the tires for, right? So you hey. really can't, you can't beat him, right? It, you, you, <laughs> you shouldn't. Um, I have, but in the past, when I was, when I was, had practice, um, but yeah, he's he's come pretty far, so I don't think I'm not touching him this year. Yeah, yeah. For folks who've maybe never been here before, um, and and think, well, I'm not I'm not good enough yet to go, or I don't have enough experience, or I don't have the right car. Mm -hmm. um, they should come, right? Oh, absolutely. It doesn't. Like, there, there's people here, like obviously there's the championship winners, but there's people from everywhere. Like some people have only. Re when I came to nationals, I think I had four or five local races under my belt. Right. And my buddy's like, you need to go to nationals. I'm like, I am not ready for nationals. He's like, you're going. And he got me here and this is, it's the, the, I look forward to it every year. It helps to have a friend to push you to go. Absolutely. When you, you don't have that. someone to say go, sometimes it's harder. I, I was, I, I was uh, guilted, challenged, I don't know what the proper word is, into running this year because I was planning to just come and do the podcasting right and uh i was uh, told in no uncertain terms i really wasn't even given the option mm. i said if you're going to be there you're going to race and i'm like i am <laughs> and i'm they're like yep yeah i'm to. like okay <laughs> i guess i'm gonna race um and uh and now i'm so glad i did i mean i haven't competed yet but um just being here and seeing everything and doing my test and tune runs mm. it is just a, a really really cool event yeah it's it's so much fun and i mean nope like and you said it over dinner. Nobody drives across the country for to six minutes of racing. Right. It's just about the people. Right. Just being in uh, around a thousand plus pe like-minded people. Right. It's just home every well, year. Well, and when there's thirteen hundred people and probably four hundred or so, there's probably nine hundred people here who arrived knowing they were very, very unlikely to get a trophy. Oh, absolutely. You yeah. Know? So they're not coming across the country for their six minutes. They're coming because of this beautiful event. Exactly. Um, any tips for folks thinking about coming for the first time? Um, everybody, if everybody's willing to give you a co-drive. Okay. Um, we offer, we try to make sure all of our seats are filled, like um, by STS buddies, that we don't have one person in our car. It's yeah. always a co-driven car. I hadn't even thought of asking to co-drive, or finding a, a, a car to co-drive. Mm. Um, I, I, I don't know how to go about that or just do you have to know somebody or that's something I'm going to work on for next year. Um, 
maybe that's how I'll get into a little more competitive <laughs> car and there I can go. just bring my gear out and and my helmet so yeah um, co-driving is the way to do it for yeah. sure then you don't have to worry about you know trucking across the country yeah. um, you can just fly here drive with your buddies leave cool you pay for gonna, tires obviously yeah but. <laughs> definitely uh, are, are you going to try to get some more runs in before next year's <laughs> Absolutely yes, um, and then I brought my girlfriend this year, and she's uh, she's getting the racing bug too. Nice. I think so. Uh, we're going to be doing a lot of local so. events because in Arizona, the the season's just starting. Right, so. right. So, uh, what are you going to race in Arizona? Uh, so my girlfriend has the Elantra N. Okay. So we're going to be doing that. Nice. Um, there's that new class coming out, so I'm just waiting for cars and mods to be announced to yep. see if I do that or save my pennies for an STS car. Very cool. Very cool. Thank you for spending some time with me again. Absolutely. After having dinner with me, I, I was still able to talk to him, talk him into coming down, so I must not have done anything too dumb at dinner. Yeah, it's um, a pleasure. Anyway. All right, Dawson Moreau, thanks a lot. We're going to do some more interviews coming up, so stay with us. This is Inside the SCCA, presented by Mazda Motorsports. I'm Brian Belansky, and I am so pleased to have with me... Carol Cohn. Carol Cohn. And, and you were named Cone before you started autocrossing, right? That's the married name I came in with. <laughs> um, so it's just irony, but, but apropos nonetheless. Yes, yes. and fun. And funny. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, absolutely. So uh, you have a very, very long history in motorsports. Yes. Um, and you have done everything from road racing to autocross. And rally. And rally. Mm -hmm. um, how, how did you get to autocross? In 1971, my husband and I bought an Alfa Romeo Spider. The uh, deal around that was it had to be a year old before you could go do anything motorsport. That was the, the, the warranty on it. Mm -hmm. And the first thing that came up was local autocrossing, and that was just great. Absolutely cool. great. I didn't know anything about it, learned fast. Yep. Learned that women that did it were really good, and so I had, there was my competition. Yeah. It was just fun. Yeah. Um, and then you went IT racing, right? Yes. And um, how long did you do that? 20 years. 20 years. Yep. And throughout the southeast, right? Yeah. Well, I went all over. Went all over. Yeah. Um, this side of the Mississippi. Okay. And south of Pennsylvania. Okay. Okay. So did you race at Road Atlanta at all? Once. Once. Okay. Because mm -hmm. um, I remember doing a lot at Road Atlanta when I was in my ITC Honda Civic and um, when I lived down there for a while. So uh, very, very cool. And, and then you came back to autocross at some point. Yes. Because yes. Of, because of, of your son, right? Yes. Um, how, how was that transition to go from road racing to autocross? He had kind of... Gra he had graduated from high school and he had a um, first generation Toyota um, mm, I'm trying to think of a model doesn't matter it was a little one with a rear engine and oh the MR2 the MR2 yeah. yes his father had given it to him after he crashed it thank you dad <laughs> um, so it was drivable Rick brought it home from New Jersey because that's where his father was living and we, between hither, thither, and yon, we've got it fixed up so he could have his wheels under him, and, he, and then he was the one that actually started autocrossing in that. And he stayed doing that. And when I stopped auto racing, because he had moved to Atlanta in the meantime, um, I just stopped to see him one day when he was at an autocross, and I said, ooh, this looks like fun. Yeah. Because they had just come in with the Pro Series. Okay. So for people who are familiar with the, um, how the club has progressed, they'll Correct. figure that out. Right, and right. I'd have to go back in my memory banks to even get close to the number. Um, so you've seen a lot over the years. Mm, yeah. Tell me a little bit about how everything has progressed from when you started in 71 until today. I've just kind of been a, the next thing kind of person. So the things that come up in my life, um, I'll get, have a shot at doing it. I may not stay with it, but it's got to keep my interest up. 
And autocrossing has never stopped being an interest. It was always a challenge because no day is ever the same as the one before it. Right. That's what's interesting about autocross, and it's when I try to explain to people what mm -hmm. we do, um, you know, they understand racing, you go around the track, go around and around and around, and I get, you know, picked on, you know, you like to drive in circles and all that kind of stuff. Um, but it's hard to explain, part of the skill of this is being able to learn a brand new course every weekend mm -hmm. fast, mm -hmm. like really, really fast, or else you're giving up your first two runs yep. just to learn the course. Yep. Um, is that, do you enjoy that challenge? Yes, because even road racing will end up being that way on some days. The weather changes. Sure. And that is a big impact on what you're doing on the road racing side because you're on the track for long periods of time. And you may have to go through a number of different weather situations all the same time right. day that you're racing. So you get the same challenge, but with autocrossing, you get to do it all in one day. Right. Road racing is usually a whole weekend. Sure. sure. So the one day thing is a really bigger challenge because you have to learn how to adapt quickly. Right. You did a little bit of autocrossing before you did a lot of road racing. Yes, once. Once. One, one year. Okay, one year. Right, right. Mm -hmm. So we've, we've had Randy Popes on the show. Yep. Uh, a prolific autocrosser. Yep. I met him. I met him when he was running the rabbit. Okay, yep. And a pretty darn good road racer. Oh, he is. He's just, I, it's hard to explain. Some people are born to certain things. Right. He was born to do that. And, and we talked about it, and, and obviously he thinks that, that, well, not obviously, he thinks autocrossing is a great training ground yep. to go road racing. Mm -hmm. So you did one year of, of autocross, then went road racing, yep. and then came back to autocross. Yep. So how much of a good training ground is road racing to then go autocrossing again? Not a lot. Yeah. Uh, the only reason for that is because autocrossing takes a whole week on, um, at the least. Right. And sometimes a whole week at the best. Right. And there's no such thing as that kind of thing in right. autocrossing. You've got to be on and ready on that given weekend. The upside of SCCA is most regions have an autocross program. They function on weekends. Some of them do a two-day event, but most of them do a one-day event, which turns into pretty much of about a half a day right. being there. Right. So it is a good training ground. Yeah. We also have uh, driver education courses for, we do it primarily for young kids. Right. Street survival. Right. Great program. Right. Um, it teaches kids that we're not your mother or your father in the car with you. So you get to do this. Right. And that is probably one of the biggest training things that we do do. Because the kid learns how not to be afraid. If their mother was afraid of driving or timid or father was afraid of driving or timid, you can get rid of that. Right. You can be your own person. Well, and, and what kid likes to learn from their parents? None that I know of. Exactly. Well, I, not mine. Mine you know, either. I didn't enjoy it when I was a kid. You know, so it, it, when you're getting the tutelage from someone who's not related to you, mm -hmm. it's like I, I tried to um, teach my wife how to golf once. Bad idea. <laughs> you, you, your husbands and spouses should not teach spouses how to golf. Uh, and I've also thought spouses probably shouldn't teach spouses how to do anything. <laughs> that's good. It's kind of like the same thing, though. I mean, you, yep. you, it's hard to take advice, especially mm -hmm. if it's criticism, from a family member. Yes. So when you're in a car with someone you don't know, there's not that emotional connection. Right. And you'll listen to them. Right. And hopefully you'll you'll like do what they say. That's the good thing about street survival. Parents are there. Right. They get to watch their kid. Right. And but they don't get in the car with their kid. Sure. The instructors do. And they get experience in differing weather conditions by us wetting down the course. Uh, sometimes with soap and they get to skip and slide and mm. it's all under controlled speeds right. so that they don't damage their car, they don't damage their tires and they get to get the experience right. of everything they're going to get on the road. I had the benefit of growing up in Wisconsin mm. and it was kind of like a rite of passage where um, once the lake would freeze over, d dad or mom would take you out to drive on the lake yep. because you'd learn how to lose control of the car and correct yep. and that kind yep. of stuff. Um, when you couldn't really hurt yourself or anything right. else. 
So, um, how, you, you, you've been doing this a little longer than I have, mm -hmm. but we've both been doing this for a long time. Yeah. How do we get the younger generation to get into what we do? Because if you look at the people here, I'm gonna guess that most of the drivers and competitors here are probably 30, 35 and older. Mm -hmm. um, there's a couple of youngsters who I've had on the show so far, um, and I've asked him the same question. I'm curious about what your thoughts are on how we can be more attractive to the younger generation. Put on a car show, mm. static car show, because that will invite people out to see the cars. And you can do that anywhere without having to have a racetrack. Yep. Good idea. Um, another thing you can do is get one of us into your eighth grade school class to talk to kids about cars and about what it takes to be in the seat doing something. Because by the time they get out of eighth grade, they're into high school and they're starting to become closer to that driving age. Right. And if they get a little bit of interest shown to them early, right. they will then take this whole country is cars. It was built on cars, it's still cars. Right. And all the foreign companies are building cars in this country. Right. So kids grow up on seeing cars, get them interested in it early as a possibility for them to go out and do what we do. Right. It's interesting to me, there's a lot of kids these days don't even want to learn to drive. Right. You know, I have, a, I have an 18 year old, hasn't, doesn't have a driver's license. And I'm a car guy. You'd think if anybody's kid was going to be driving, it'd be my kid. No, um, that could be the other way around. It's because you're a car guy. Well, no, but... But, but you don't know how they... But, but if Alex likes coming to the racetrack. I know, but if you don't tell him exactly what you're about right. in cars, he's not going to know that. He's only going to see right. what you do for other people. Right. Interesting. Interesting. Are you having fun? Oh, blast. You're done competing. Yep. How, do, how did we do? It doesn't so, matter. No, it doesn't matter. Okay. Because yesterday was zip. Today was a good day. Okay. And I, the, one of the things that happens in this sport is if you have a really bad day and you had zero successes for the day, there's always tomorrow. Right. I, I always, all of motorsports, I always compare it to golf. When yes. I go golfing... I could shoot a hundred, but I would have one great shot to make me believe I'm, I, I'm I could be good at it. Yep. You know, and it keeps coming me back over yep. and over and over again. Yep. I can do a hundred laps on a racetrack and have one or two good ones, mm -hmm. and you get that feeling. Yep. Here, uh, I'm hoping for uh, my first time here. I've never I've never done solo nationals. I'm hoping for a nice clean run. Yep. It feels good. Yep. Um, because I'm going to come back next year, hopefully, and do it again in a better car. Um, but yeah, it's 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 very. Um, the results are immediate. Yeah. And the results can be fixed tomorrow. Yes. Or improved upon. Yes. Um, what's your favorite part about this event? The people. Yeah. Um, I'm from Atlanta, which is a big city, and 40 years of living in Florida. When you get to Atlanta, the mix of people is much greater. And the good part about that is you get to mingle with every race, color, um, nationality, work experience. Right. We're, we're just a great big bowl of salad. Yeah. Mm. So the one thing I like about this event is um, while I, I'm interested in getting younger people here, Mm -hmm. um, there's no cutoff of how old you can be no. and still be A, fast, or B, have fun doing it. Yep. Um, there, are, there are a lot of people who um, might have decided to do sail off into the sunset who are still here doing it. Yes. And do you feel that this keeps you young? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. And the reason is there are lots of young people here. And where in, in your home space, young people and old people don't mix a lot, except right. that's my grandfather. Um, here, nobody cares who 
you are. They don't care what your age is. They only care about competing with you. And when you have the helmet on, nobody knows how old you are. Right. Can't tell. So, yeah. thank cool. you so much. You're welcome. When I when I came here, someone said to me, y y "You got to have Carol Cohn on the show." Why'd they say that? Because they said you were interesting oh. <laughs> and had a great story. Yeah, and it's they were a good right. story. It's a good story. Um, I've just always loved cars. I took auto mechanics when I was in high school when girls could not do go to school in anything but skirts. Right. So you have to think about that when you're working on a car. So um, were you doing auto mechanics wearing a skirt? My instructor was so delighted to have the first girl in his class that his system of points right. was based on doing certain things. Right. He made it so that I could do those certain things that didn't mean crawling under a car. Okay. And he was, and it, you, if you got 125 points, you made it through the class. And he made sure that I did. He was Wonderful. great. That's yeah. great. All right, Carol Cohn, thank you for spending a few time for this. You're us. welcome. This was fun. Thank you. This is, S, uh, this is Inside the SCCA, presented by Mazda Motorsports. We'll be back with more in just a bit. Inside the SCCA, presented by Mazda Motorsports. That presented by Mazda Motorsports, that's the important part here. Uh, they are the good people who have helped us get here. Uh, it costs a lot of money to go and travel uh, and do these events. And without partner help, I couldn't do this. So a big thank you to Mazda Motorsports. They do so much for the SCCA and so much for club members. Uh, if you're interested in some of what they do uh, and are interested in some of their new uh, offerings, specifically uh, the Spec MX-5 car, uh, I've got all that information in the show notes. You can just click right down there. Also, the new Mazda collection is out. This hat is from that collection. If you'd like a Mazda collection hat cap, uh, that link is all down there as well. Also, want to thank Goodyear Racing Tires. Uh, they are one of our longtime partners here on the show. They are. Uh, they don't have an autocross-specific tire for the street classes, uh, but one of their companies is Dunlop, and Dunlop makes a pretty stout tire. So that's what they have provided me to race on this weekend, and a big thank you to them. Uh, what else is there? Oh, Roadkeeper. How can I forget? The official in-car camera of the inside the SCCA. Uh, they have an awesome product at a really good price point. And if you're an SCCA member and a racer, uh, you know, and if you're building a new car, you should know uh, that uh, video is now required at the majors level. And at the uh, Super Tours, I think it might even be required for almost everything now. Uh, but nonetheless, if you need an in-car video system, uh, there's uh, no better system out there than Roadkeeper. Uh, check them out, roadkeeper.com. All these links are in the show notes. Let's get right back to the interviews. Inside the SCCA, presented by Mazda Motorsports. We're here at the 50th Solo Nationals, but you all knew that if you're this far into the show. With me right now is Lane Lindemann hey. from Atlanta, Georgia. XPL. Yes. What is XPL? That's not a class most people are going to be familiar with. X prepared ladies. Okay. All right, very good. And you're yeah. in a Miata? I am. I am in the Miata. In, oh, in the Miata. What yes. makes your Miata the Miata? It's LaFonda. It's LaVonda. LaFonda. LaFonda. Yes. Okay, explain. Yes. That's that's the name she was given okay. by the car builder, Eric Anderson. Okay. Um, is there a story behind that? Or do you, and if there is, do you know it? <laughs> I, I don't know the story. I there has to, to be a story. story. Yeah. Okay. Um, I just, she's, everybody knows her as LaFonda. She's okay. fantastic. She is, uh, she can be a bit of a drama queen, but she, she owns it and she lives up to it. And, uh, and she's a she's a hell of a car. All right, all yeah. right. So how how many times have you been to the Solo Nationals? This is my third year. Third year. Yes. Okay. This is my first. Oh, congrats! Thank you. Welcome. Thank you. It has been a quite the experience. Right? Are you having an amazing time? I'm having an amazing time. Then I am exhausted. Yeah. But it's fine. It's fine. I will make it to the end. I, I race tomorrow and Friday. Oh, excellent. And. Um, race would probably be an exaggerated term <laughs> uh, I'm gonna participate I'm gonna go through the start and I'm and gonna come, come through, through the, the finish, finish and hopefully I won't hit any cones in the middle if and you're if not I hitting do, any cones you're not going fast enough you know they keep telling me that but I can tell you the people who win <laughs> are not hitting cones so I'm calling BS I'm calling I, BS I mean you I hit know some you're, in between. so I was told you were a badass fast driver thank you 
Do you hit cones? I do. Absolutely. On your fastest <laughs> runs? Oh, no. Uh, see? Well. See? Gotcha. But I hit them before and after, so... Okay. Fair you know, enough. I had, you have to find out where that is. Fair enough. So, have you already competed, or are you competing? I have, yes, I competed yesterday morning and okay. this morning. And well how done. did we do? I won XPL. Okay, this is the second time today that someone has sat in this chair. Yes. And I did not know when they sat down that I am speaking to a 2023 <laughs> SCCA solo national champion. Woo! It's just happenstance. So, th- I... I don't necessarily pre-screen all the people that I talk to. I like talking to people who've got stories to tell. And I like to learn those stories as we go, as case in point here. Excellent. So so is how many national champions do you have? This is my this first. This is your first. My third very year, first. first championship. Yes. What does that yes. feel like? Un- I'm going to swear. I'm fucking believable. No, no, it's YouTube. We can do that. It was, I I'll mean, have to click the explicit <laughs> button on this episode, thanks to you. I'm but sorry, that's okay. Sorry, sorry. No, I'll put this late in the episode. If you swear late in the episode, you it's don't okay. have to hit the, ex- the explicit button. Perfect. Yeah, I mean, there's really not another way to describe yeah. it. Yeah, between the car and then actually winning. Because right. I'd, I'd never driven that car before until my first lap on the course. Not even test and tune? No, no test and tune. Because you're insane, or because the car wasn't? <laughs> re- I mean, come on now. I, I is because I didn't know what I was driving until the very last minute. Okay. And Eric Anderson heard about it, and he's like, "Well, hey, I've got a seat. You can you can drive it in XPL if you want." And it's like, oh that yeah, is, that is next level badassery. Uh, for him too, yeah. yeah. But I, I was. I mean, who's gonna turn down a chance to drive sure. La Fonda with uh, the clunk? Oh my gosh. With the clunk. Oh. I love it. I love it. Yes. All right, so were you ahead after day one, or did you have to I, come back? I was ahead okay. by like point nine something. Well, that's a big lead. It was all right. And what we do, point nine seconds is like an eternity. <laughs> yeah, that's true. It does feel like that. Yeah. It was, it was pretty surprising to me as well. I, I expected to, you know, have my ass handed to me. But, sure. But uh, apparently me and LaFonda get along. So uh, apparently so. <laughs> have you already Have it. you already signed up for next year with LaFonda? Uh, I, I need to talk to uh, <laughs> need to talk to her daddy about that. All right, all right, all right. So, how did today go then? I'm guessing okay. It, it started off really rough. Okay. Uh, it was a, a rushed start for me because it was the five minute warning, and of course I had to pee. So, run a half mile to the porta potties, run back, and then jump in the car and go to start, and then forget half the course and yeah. uh, DNF'd it. Mm-hmm. Um, but then the second run, I got it all together in my head and okay. put down a solid time. All right. And uh, then I did it again on the third run. So That is so cool. It was awesome. So cool. Um, how long have you been autocrossing this in is general? My fourth year. Your fourth year. Mm-hmm. And what do you drive when you're not driving La Fonda? Everything. Everything. Okay. I, uh, last year I was in Rick Cohn's Miata okay. um, all year. And then this year I have been in a different vehicle every single event, okay. local and national. Um, all Miatas or all oh, different stuff? Uh, like Elantra ends okay. the SMF Mini. Um, okay. I was in a Miata. I, I mean, just like right. all, Mustang. So, so you had some Miata background. That that must have helped. Yes. No. I mean, is it? Yeah, a little bit, I guess. It's can't, like a Miata hurt. with Mustang power. <laughs> so. Well, there, there's that. There's that. Third time here. What do you like about this? Uh, okay. Aside from winning a championship, what do you yes. like about Solo Nationals? Ah, everything. Yeah. I, you, it's, you come to for the cars and you stay for the people, I think is the saying, but right. it's 100% accurate. Um, yeah. I just, like, even, even, you know, Eric and Randall and his dad and Dina Kelly, like, I've, I don't think I've ever felt so supported in, that, like, this, you know, brand new environment and... and uh, and all the other supportive people just like jumping in, the other competitors in my class running up and, you know, hugging each other. Everybody's so, super supportive. So did you come planning to drive something else? And because to come here and not have a drive planned out, I'm, I'm trying to I'm trying to <laughs> drill down on this a little bit because you're not I, the first person I've, I've heard say this. I, I knew what I was going to drive in the pro because I did the pro finale as well. Okay. Um, and I had already signed up because I, I wanted to get in. Right. So I didn't know what I was driving when I signed up for Solo Nationals. No. And that just kind of kept on going until <laughs> like the Friday before Nationals. So. As a person who plans <laughs> everything, 
It is so counterintuitive to me, but I love it. That would be way out of my comfort zone. Do you normally not plan things? I am. I'm actually a planner. I, okay. Yeah. I don't believe that for I, a second. I I was. I'm going to call BS on that too. <laughs> to say I was anxious is an understatement. Okay. I was like, I, I need to find something to drive. So. Very nice. Um, Very nice. Yeah. I just. So what are you going to drive next year? I have, mean. No idea, no right? No clue. Just, you, yeah. You could have something planned, though, before you get here, right? I, that, that is the goal, 100%. <laughs> yeah. I, um, I'm happy to, to try new cars. La Fonda was awesome. I mean, there's so many so many of the cars I've driven were absolutely right. amazing, but there was no way I was going to turn down a chance to, to drive this particular car. What got you to autocross to start with? Um, my neighbor, David Nolan, uh, okay. he moved in across the street and I saw his S2000 with a bunch of stickers on it. And I said, what do you do with that thing? And he's like, well, come to an autocross event and I'll show you. And yeah. he said autocross. I thought that meant like jumping cars in the dirt, like right. autocross. Sure, I get that. So uh, this I had to see. Um, and then I sat on the grass and watched him race around a parking lot, like me and his wife and kids. And I was like, well, that's that's really cute. But, you know, no thanks. And he said, hop in the car. Yeah. You know, the rest is history. My face hurt for a week from smiling so hard That's from awesome. all the rides. Yeah, because it's hard to explain to people yeah. what we do. Yeah. You know, mean, even you show them a video. And it's like, oh, just okay. not the same. You know, yeah. and, and and then when you tell them that halfway through that your car's up on three wheels, <laughs> yeah. they're like, no. And then I showed yeah. them a picture that, thank God, someone caught the picture. Right, And right. I'm like, yes, this, this is my car. That's me. I did that. Look three, at me. I wheels. did that. And like, oh, you're really driving that thing. I'm like, yeah. I'm driving it as fast as this slow car will go, right. but I'm having a good time doing it. Right. You that's, know? That's the point. And I'm there with McLarens and, and Camaros and Corvettes and other yeah. awesome cars, and we have a great time. And Yeah. And it's what we do. Exactly. So it's I can't think of any place I'd rather be than standing in a, well, it's not so bad today, but it, yes, Monday, right. a 98 degree tarmac in the middle of Lincoln, Nebraska. I mean, me either. It, it sounds like as, it sounds amazing. As awesome as it gets. Yeah. Um, what What do you tell someone who who doesn't understand? Do you invite them out? Always. Yeah. Always. How many have you hooked? Uh, I haven't hooked anyone yet. Okay. But I've gotten a few people to come out. Um, yeah. They're usually pretty hesitant because they think they have to drive right. well, and I'm just like, no, right, no, of no. Of course not. Yeah. Nobody yeah. expects you to drive well the first time. Right. Maybe the second time. But no, 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 no. 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 <laughs> I expect you to drive well the no, second time. No, no, I, I don't put that pressure on right. them for real, though. But um, usually I'll try and get them to come to a novice school right. so they can see what it's about, learn. And then that's how we, you know, get them, get them hooked right. the first time. And honestly, today, so I, I soloed back in the 80s and 90s. Yeah. Uh, or 80s and early 90s. Uh, before coming out here this year, I had not done a solo since 1992. Oh, wow. Uh, and, and, uh, but back when I started, there was no YouTube. Yeah. There was no internet. The only place that you could learn was going to an event and asking questions or watching um, or maybe getting someone to ride with you. Yeah. Now, all this stuff is out there, yeah. you know, to teach people just how to get there the first time and not be weird about it. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. Um, people are, kids are so lucky these days. <laughs> We're so lucky. <laughs> they have no idea how good they have it, right? Cool. Yeah. Thank you for stopping Absolutely. by. Absolutely. Thank uh, you for having me. Uh, another happy surprise sitting down. Another national champion. X, Yay. XPL. Yes. 2023 national champion. I think I'm just going to have to start making a list. <laughs> I'm a national champion. I accidentally interviewed. I talked to you, right? All right. Lane <laughs> Lindemann with us here on Inside the SCCA, presented by Mazda Motorsports.